Hi guys, um, so welcome to the first edition ever of Plant Based Kristen. Tonight what we are going to be making are tacos. Um, we're going to be using pinto beans um, basically as the taco meat. Um, I get canned beans so what I did was I rinsed them off. Um, I basically rinsed them in the sink until they basically stop bubbling and everything. Um, this kind of gets rid of like I guess like the gassy issue that some people have with beans um, and also just you know gets rid of some of the preservatives and stuff so that they're a little bit more pure so I've got those draining over here um, we're gonna make a pineapple salsa to go on top of it that is very simple um, we are also going to bake our own tortilla shells and we're gonna make them basically into taco shells um, these are very simple I've got my oven preheating right now for it it's preheating at 425 um, and these are just regular whole wheat tortillas that I bought. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to oil, put a little bit of oil and a little bit of salt on each of the shells on both sides of them. And that is going to make them crispy and a little bit salty as well. So. little plastic basting brush that I got from like the dollar store ages ago. We're going to take just a little bit of oil. I'm going to put it in a bowl so I don't make a mess here. And just so you guys can kind of see what I've got. There's a lot going on down here. I'm just going to warn you. <laughs> okay, so just take a little bit of the oil, brush it on one of these bad boys little bit of salt. We're going to make two of them tonight. A little bit of salt. I use um pink Himalayan salt. Um, I like the flavor. It's really nice, actually. So hold on. Let's get rid of these other ones. We'll set them aside. And then I flip it over. A little bit more oil. A little bit more salt. And there's one of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on the pan. And here, let me show you. It's it's a little tricky I think um so I'm gonna put the tortilla down on the pan and then I, I just have these little like craft things that I bought um but and then you're gonna flip the tortilla shell so that it rests on the pan basically and that's how you're gonna bake it and then when it comes out it's gonna be shaped like a tur like an actual taco shell which is pretty cool so um that's how we're gonna do those you cook those for 10 to 20 minutes. Um, I usually go right in the middle, right at 15. That works pretty well for me at 425 degrees. Um, so those are the shells, and then we're doing a pineapple salsa. The way the pineapple salsa works is it's basically um, one part pineapples, one part cilantro, um, three tablespoons of red onion, which I usually use a little bit more because I really like the crisp factor in there, and then um, double the amount of tomatoes. So um, the recipe itself that we're going to use calls for, the recipe that we're going to use calls for about um, a quarter cup of pineapple, but we're going to double that because this pineapple salsa is really good and I, I really like to put extra um, on my tacos because it's, it's so delicious, I think. So yeah, we're going to double the recipe. So instead of a quarter of a cup, we're going to do a half. Now, um, this recipe also calls for, and this is optional, but you can use um, three tablespoons of jalapeno if you want in the salsa. Now, I bought these really nice fresh jalapenos, but for anybody who knows or has experienced this, fresh jalapeno is super, super spicy. So if you do three tablespoons of fresh jalapenos, unless you really have a high spice tolerance, you're going to die. So um, I, I did maybe a third of that, and it was still pretty spicy. So doing one tablespoon of fresh jalapenos, in my opinion, is, is okay. But that's also with me doubling the recipe and adding double the amount of tomatoes and onions and um, uh, pineapple as well. So... I would not recommend that putting that much jalapeno in it. But some people really do like a lot of heat. 
Um, I like to share my food with a lot of people too, so um, I try and I love spice, but I do try and tone it down a little bit for people, you know, for their sake. So um, we're gonna do one tablespoon of jalapeno, a half a cup of pineapple. We're gonna do um, a full cup of tomato. We're gonna do six tablespoons of red onion. Um, we're gonna do a half a cup of cilantro, some lime juice, um, and that's basically the salsa. So it's, it's pretty simple. And you can very easily make that and have that done in the 15 minutes that the, the tortilla shells are in the oven. And then the pinto beans themselves, we're just gonna literally cook on the stove um, with, and I already measured it out here, but it's um, just cumin and chili powder, equal amounts. And that's literally it. It's, so it's, it's super simple. And then when you, I assemble everything, I've got this um, avocado that I'm going to put. So I'm going to cut up the avocado and slice that up. We're going to do the pinto beans on the bottom, then the avocado. Then um, I, I was considering, and I'm, not, I'm still not sure if I'm going to do it, but I have this baby spinach arugula mix that I was thinking of putting on top for like freshness. And then maybe the pineapple salsa on top of it. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what my mood is at once everything's done. So... But um, yeah, so this is pretty simple. Usually, I, you can probably have this done in 30 minutes or less. Um, and that includes letting the oven preheat. So I figured this was a good recipe to start off with for everyone. All right, so we got our pineapple. Here, let's adjust this again so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Pineapple. Oh, I didn't measure it, just kidding. Hold on, how much do we have so far? That's about a half a cup. Oops. Yeah, that's about a half a cup right there. Okay. So we're good on the pineapple. Set that aside. Got tomato. Um, I've got some already chopped up jalapeno. So we're going to use a little bit of this for the salsa. Like I said, we're not going to go too crazy here because it is so strong. Um, and then red onion. Chop this up pretty small. So yeah, I did the um, this pineapple itself. I did, well actually that chunk's kind of big, so we're going to eat that. But anyway, um... Maybe like half half inch pieces. And now we're doing our red onion here. I really like red onion because it's very good raw because it has like a, a slight sweet flavor to it, which is um really nice in like salsas. It's really nice on burgers. It's just really nice in its raw form. All right, so we're doing six tablespoons of the onion. I don't have any tablespoons here. We'll use my we'll use my fancy spoons. You guys can see the fancy spoons that my parents got for me that I think are super pretty. And so it's like it's like a it's like a little flower with little butterflies on it, and I just think it's like the cutest thing. And they say like little cute things in there too, so I'll use this. But yeah, we're gonna do about six tablespoons of onion here. Gotta break it up a little bit so that I can measure it more accurately and so that you don't get really big bites of onion when you're eating this salsa. Because even though it is delicious, it can be a little overpowering at times. So let's not do that to ourselves. Yeah, this is basically the way that my counter looks anytime that I cook. So. <laughs> It's kind of crazy, but yep, yeah, that's me. I'm like an organized mess, I feel like. Okay, so there's one, two, three, three more, four. This is almost perfect. We're gonna need a little bit more. Five. Mm -hmm. 
we're just going to use the rest of this. So about six tablespoons of onion here. We're going to do double the amount of tomato. So we're going to do a full cup here of tomato. Which my guess is going to be maybe one and a half of these guys is my assumption. That's my timer for my laundry. This knife needs to be sharpened, I know. I'll do that one of these days. No, my oven, that was a timer for my oven, just kidding. I still have 18 minutes on my laundry, okay. So, let's put these taco shells in. And once again, there they are. Cook it in the middle wrap. We're gonna do 15 minutes here. And continue on with this tomato. Really pretty cutting board. I got it at Walmart. I think for like maybe ten bucks. Yeah. So um, growing up, my parents weren't really very good cooks. Um, they made breakfast, and um, I ate a lot of Hamburger Helper as a kid. Um, which you know. <laughs> was delicious, so I didn't really care. But um, basically, as soon as I've been tall enough to reach the stove, I've been cooking on it. Um, I did. I had a lot of experimental meals that uh, didn't necessarily turn out the best, but I guess, you know, you learn by trial and error, right? So, um, yeah, that's essentially how I learned how to cook. And um, I've always been a huge foodie and really into eating. So, yeah, and I think the more that I cooked, the more I was into eating food as well and I think that's part of my love for it is I think about you know how yummy and delicious the meal is going to be um but I did cook for a lot of my friends growing up and uh I'm lucky that they are very tolerant because they've definitely tried some pretty crazy things for me but uh for the most part it, it turns out well so that's good at least But um, yeah, I love this recipe. I feel like it's so simple. And then when you're done with it, it's so delicious. And um, I made this last week for the first time and um, let a bunch of people try it at work. And uh, one of my coworkers, um, she was like, oh my goodness, she's like, I don't even miss the meat in this. And I was like, right? Um, and I feel like they're really filling. So um, what I do is, um, so with the taco shells, they're only really good if you can make them fresh right then and there. So for tonight, that's gonna work. But tomorrow, for instance, if I bring leftovers to work, I basically will turn it into a burrito where I'll put the pinto beans down. And then, you know, all the toppings, you know, wrap it all up. I'll use a little bit of the pinto beans, smush it up onto the actual tortilla shell and roll it all up and essentially have it like a burrito. So, um, and then I bake it in the oven thing, the toaster oven that we have at work, usually for, I think, 10 minutes on broil and I don't let it preheat or anything because broiling cooks things like super fast but if it's not already hot then it's not going to cook it as quickly as if you were to if you were at home you were to let your broiler preheat for 10 to 15 minutes and then stick it in there then it's not going to take a full 10 minutes and you don't want a burnt burrito those are not good so okay so we're good on the tomato now we are going to do the cilantro so I'm actually really bad with keeping plants alive, like tragically. Um, I'm actually really good at killing things. 
but I saw um, that the best way to keep cilantro apparently is by, this is actually the original bag that it came in, but you put um, a glass with water, you stick the cilantro, you cut all the cilantro stems like at the ends, and then you put a plastic bag over it. I figured it already came in a plastic bag, I'll just use that. And it's been over a week and these are still alive and thriving. Um, what I do is I change the water every time I use the cilantro. So we're just gonna change the water right now. And um, it's still alive, so I think uh, I think that's what I'm gonna be doing from now on. But yeah, I um I got this basil plant and I had it I had it out on my island, my counter here, um, with water, and I followed the directions I thought, and um, it died in like four days. I killed it. So yeah, I don't have the best history when it comes to plants, but I'm I'm trying to learn. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, cilantro. Here, so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm basically just I'm ripping up, ripping the uh, leaves off of the stem. And then we're gonna chop it all up. And this is um going to go in the salsa. And uh, if you want, even as like a garnish, you can put extra on top of the actual tacos themselves make it look pretty so yeah this call this is um because we're doubling the recipe it's calling for about half a cup of cilantro which is going to be a lot actually so and by the way I am going to put the recipe in the comments below of this video so that you guys can have that just in case you don't remember all of my measurements. So um, basically, yeah, being a huge foodie my entire life and now being, you know, solely eating a plant-based diet, um, my friends do ask me, they're like, how do you come up with all the ideas for your food? And I said, honestly, I just crave it. And so when I crave it, I then just Google and, you know, and I find a plant-based um, recipe online and, you know, I look at the stars and the ratings and stuff and I look at the comments and I basically just go with, you know, anything that has more than four stars. And I don't think it's ever led me astray. So yay, Google. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, that's basically what I'm going to be showing you guys in these videos. I did make this really awesome stuffed jalapeno, though. Um, so I don't eat cheese either. So what I did was um, I was looking for one without vegan cheese. I'm not the biggest fan of vegan cheese. And I feel like I haven't necessarily given it... I haven't been plant-based for very long, so I haven't really, um, I've experimented in it a, with it a little bit, but I haven't found anything that, like, drives me crazy yet. This knife's not going to work for this, I don't think. Um, so I'm still on the search for a good vegan cheese, but when I was looking up this recipe for, um, a good, like, stuffed baked jalapeno, they all called for vegan cheese or vegan cream cheese. And me not being a fan of it, you know, naturally I don't have it on hand. So I basically just made up my own <laughs> variation where I chopped up some onions and tomatoes and um, mushrooms. And I stuffed it with that. And then I put some nutritional yeast on top for a little bit of like a nutty kind of cheesy flavor. And then I made my own vegan ranch, which I'll show that. I'll do that in one of our videos too because it was awesome. Um, and I basically just topped it with a vegan ranch. Um... And it was awesome, so I'll do that one of these days. But nutritional yeast, in case you've never heard of it. This is nutritional yeast. Um, so basically what it is, is when you do eat mostly a plant-based diet, you, um, you one, you don't need actual, you know, milk that comes from any sort of animal. And this kind of tastes similar to it, but also if you look at the back of it, it's got a ton, mm, can you read that? Mm, can you read that? It has basically a ton of the vitamins that people that are plant-based um, usually have to use supplements for to get. So it's got B12 in it. It's got, um, mm, 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 mm. it has, what's the one that I'm, the people, okay, so B12, B6 are in here. Um, it has calcium, it has iron, um, which actually a lot of um, dark green leafy vegetables have like iron in them. But, um, yeah, so this is good because it's a delicious way to still, to get some of your supplements and you don't have to necessarily use a supplement. You can do it through your diet 
using nutritional yeast. Um, I did make this one. I tried making a chickpea, a chickpea omelet. Um, instead of using egg, I tried using chickpea flour. And I feel like it wouldn't have been bad, but I do think it called for a little too much nutritional yeast, and I think that's why I didn't like it. I'm going to try that again one of these days. Um, I'm going to give it another shot. We're going to try this again. So um, if it turns out well, then I'll post one of those videos as well. And then, yeah, if you guys have any ideas, anything you want me to try, let me know. Um, I do make this really awesome chili. Um, I also make a, a good pho, a vegan pho that I um, want to put in one of these videos. Cilantro. And then we're going to use some lime juice as well here. Maybe the juice from half a lime. And then mix it all up. And then there's your pineapple salsa right there. Um, also, if you are using canned jalapenos, um, you probably could get away with, you know, almost three tablespoons, but I would suggest before adding all the jalapeno to do one tablespoon at a time and then try it and then do another tablespoon and then try it and test it for heat because if you put too much heat, then you're not going to enjoy it and that's not the purpose of this, you know? So, all right. And a little lime juice. Oh, that's my onion. Just kidding. I lost my lime. I lost my lime. Oh, there's my lime. Try and do this so that I don't make a mess or get any of the seeds in the actual salsa. So I try and cup it all with my hands while I'm squeezing it. Because I don't have one of those fancy juicers or anything like some people do. I've definitely squirted myself many times trying to do this. Character building experiences, right? I mean, that's that's what it all boils down to. What do we have? We have four minutes on our shells. We're going to start cooking our beans, actually, too, right after this. Okay. I think that's enough. <clears throat> so we're going to put our beans on. They're nice and drained. I'm going to do medium heat for this. And I'm going to wait for them to kind of start sizzling before I add the dry seasoning here. So yeah, like I said, it's just chili powder and cumin. Oh, you guys can't see my beans. Hold on, let's lift this up. Just chili powder and cumin. But um, yeah, I just have this little pot here with my beans on it. And we're just going to basically try to cook it. You do have to be careful because if you cook it for too long, it's basically going to turn into mush. Which I've done before, so I mean, it's, it tastes the same. And if you don't mind, like, you know, refried beans, you know, it, that's basically the consistency it takes on. So, like, a pasty consistency almost. Um, if you don't mind that, I mean, it still tasted great, but yeah, they were, they were a little overdone. All right, we're just mixing up our salsa now. I love the colors in this, I think it's so pretty. And it also tastes fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna do, I don't wanna, oops, I don't wanna kill people here. So we're gonna do just under a teaspoon worth of jalapeno. Yeah, I think that's good. We're gonna start with that. And then we're gonna try it and then we'll see how it is. All right, I hear my beans starting to sizzle. salt and pepper to taste but we'll do that once they've cooked a little bit these aren't going to take long at all especially since i'm using canned beans they're essentially already cooked so we're just basically seasoning them and heating them up and the salsa is pretty much ready 
Okay, so let's try it and see how we are in terms of heat. I'm going to get a little bit of everything in this bite here. I think it's perfect. All right. There's our salsa. We're going to put that aside. dinner is almost ready so it's not too bad um yeah this might take 30 minutes total um and that's for even preheating time for the oven so i feel like that isn't that bad and they're delicious when they're done so Try some of this bean and see how it tastes. More seasoning. And I'm I want to use salt and pepper and add both of those to it. Um so that's another thing too, like just season as you go and like taste as you go and season as you go. Um when you're cooking, that's a lot of it too. taco shells are ready. So we're basically just doing an, another teaspoon of both cumin and chili powder. shells themselves kind of like folded around <laughs> the um, glasses that I have and it's okay just very carefully because everything's super hot we have to sit and let them cool anyway so you're gonna very carefully just conform reconform the actual shells okay it's not coming apart so we're gonna wait for it to cool before we try and do that the beans are pretty much done salt and pepper and then we just assemble our tacos and then we're done all right I'm gonna do about a 10 minute timer all right we're gonna let the uh, taco shells cool for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna assemble everything and then we're in business so um, I'll see you guys in a few <laughs> 